Hi, welcome to Chemistry 1001, States of Matter. We're going to talk about an important topic here, phase diagrams. A phase diagram is a kind of map of whether a substance can be solid, liquid or gas. Uh, and it's generally plotted uh, pressure against temperature. Uh, a substance can exist, obviously, either as a gas, liquid or a solid depending on the conditions of temperature and pressure, under certain specific conditions, uh, a substance can exist in two or at most uh, three states. If a substance coexists in two states, we have a coexistence line. It can be a boiling point line, a melting point line or a sublimation point line. Uh, boiling point is coexistence of gas and liquid, you know. Melting point is coexistence of liquid and solid, you know that. And sublimation, if you've listened to the mini lecture before, is coexistence of solid and gas. And it's possible for all three substances, solid, liquid and gas, to coexist uh, at one specific point called the triple point. A phase diagram is a plot of these lines, these coexistence lines, of pressure versus temperature for that substance. And the coexistence lines separate the pressure temperature plane into regions into which solid, liquid and gas can coexist. So we really need to have a look at, at an example of this. And here it is for, you guessed it, water. So here's pressure versus temperature, and immediately you can see a kind of map, and there are lines. Here's the solid region over here. Why is this solid? Because it's at low temperature and high pressure. When you have low temperature, like when it's cold, and when the pressure is high, you form solids, e.g. like ice. This is the ice structure here, nice hexagonal structure. And when you start increasing the temperature, for example, this solid, it will become a liquid. So in this region, we have liquid. And this line here is the solid liquid coexistence line, otherwise known as the melting point line. The temperatures on this line correspond to the freezing point at different pressures, at different pressures. If you change the pressure on a substance, uh, it will change its freezing point. Now water is rather unusual. Water is rather unusual because uh, as you increase the pressure of the uh, on the water solid, the temperature at which it melts uh, decreases. This is opposite. This is opposite to the normal state of affairs for a substance. Normally if you increase the pressure on a substance, its melting temperature will increase. So look at the slope of the water line. It's, it's sloping backwards. Normally, this is sloping forwards. Now this is important because if you're not careful, you can slip on ice and break your back. The reason is when you step on the ice, you increase the pressure on the ice. Increasing the pressure on the ice uh, momentarily re increases, uh, decreases the melting temperature, you can see if you increase the pressure, the temperature moves to the left, this line sloping to the left. So here uh, you can see that happening. And the liquid water becomes slippery and, well, you slip. So that's the melting point line going backwards for water, very important for life on Earth. And the reason for that is water has a quite open structure. Uh, then we have the liquid line and we reach this blue line here, which is the uh, normal boiling point line, the liquid vapor coexistence line. And these two lines, the melting point line and the boiling point line, meet at this particular point, which is called the triple point. Uh, it actually meets this line here, which is the sublimation line, where the solid goes directly to the gas. Why is this gas down here? Because this is high temperature and low pressure. So this is gas on the far right, high temperature, low pressure. This is solid, low temperature, high pressure. And in the middle we have liquid. So it's really easy, actually. And you can see that there's only one way three lines can coexist. That's just a fact. 
in a plane, if you draw three lines, if they intersect, they can only intersect at one point. And that's why we have a triple point. And this is a unique point. It's a unique point for water, and it's used to define uh, special properties, uh, such as zero degrees, uh, such as uh, it's used to define uh, special points, such as the uh, one bar pressure and standard Celsius scale. So here we have 0 0.01 at the triple point at 0.6117 kilopascals. Uh, and that's triple point. Now, there's something very interesting. Uh, if we expand the graph for some particular materials, actually most materials, this is the phase diagram for carbon dioxide. It looks exactly as you would expect. There's a triple point over here, uh, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, and what we find is everything is more or less normal. You can see the slope of the carbon dioxide line is positive here, unlike for water. But if we follow the gas line, it eventually disappears. It disappears. What does that mean? That means above a certain temperature, in the case of carbon dioxide above 31 degrees C, there is no more boiling. You can't boil it. That's weird. So uh, above a certain temperature, you can no longer boil something. At that particular point, there's no real distinction between a gas and a liquid. And this is called the supercritical fluid. It's really interesting because what you can imagine is you can take a gas, for example, gas uh, carbon dioxide is zero at zero degrees Celsius, and this particular pressure here, um, let's call it one atmosphere, we can heat that up to 60 degrees, it's a gas. And then at 60 degrees, we can increase the pressure right up to this point here, which is 7,400 kilopascals. Uh, about 74 ATM. It's still a gas. And then we can cool it down at that particular pressure. And we can come to this point over here. And apparently it's a liquid. Apparently it's a liquid. Around in this region it's a liquid. Certainly we can cool it down. We can reduce the pressure to a liquid. So we can go from this point down in here into the gas, go around the critical point and come to a liquid. And at no point, at no point will the substance have boiled. Of course, when we then uh, reduce the pressure at constant pressure, it will start to boil at that particular temperature. So that sort of says that there isn't a very clear distinction between solid and liquid. That's the meaning of this supercritical fluid. Uh, gases with um, which are operating above the supercritical fluid temperature, that's this temperature here, uh, are quite interesting solvents because they're neither liquid nor gas. And so, for example, in the case of CO2, it can be used to do some freeze drying and removing flavors from compounds at relatively low temperature without destroying the material. You can extract chemicals, uh, compounds from materials by dissolving them in what is called supercritical carbon dioxide. Really, really interesting. Critical points. Um, under certain temperatures and pressure, the interface between a liquid and a vapor phrase for a substance disappears. And this is called the critical point, just what I've talked about. These critical points occur at specific critical temperatures and critical pressures. That's this point just here. T critical here and T critical for the pressure. And this is another special point, the triple point, but that's not the, not, not the critical point. A supercritical fluid exists at a pressure and a temperature above the critical point for a substance, specifically above the critical pressure and above the critical temperature. Above those two quantities separately, you cannot have really a liquid or a gas. That's technically, they're the same thing. Now, here's uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, in a sealed container 
and we see here a carbon dioxide liquid and gas. So it's at the boiling point and you can sort of see a little bit of formation of bubbles here, so it hasn't quite reached equilibrium. Maybe it's just being heated. As it continues heating, um, the substance warms and you start to see uh, that the meniscus uh, uh, is disappearing. So not only is the temperature increasing, but the pressure is increasing. So essentially we're moving along this line here, the coexistence line, liquid and gas, because we can see both liquid and gas in those pictures. We are starting over here. We're moving along the coexistence line, the melting, the boiling point line, and we see that the meniscus starts to disappear. It becomes all frothy and foamy. As it continues increasing, it becomes more and more difficult to distinguish liquid and vapor. Um, once the critical point is reached, there is actually no difference between liquid and solid. We have critical P and T and uh, we have a homogeneous substance. In fact, it turns milky white, whereas this was transparent, this material becomes more or less uh, opaque. And the reason for that is it doesn't want, the, the system doesn't know whether it wants to be condensed or not. So it doesn't know whether it wants to form a big liquid or a gas or any kind of droplet uh, of variable size. So what happens is we get uh, length scale variations, small droplets, medium droplets, big droplets, all floating around in here and as a result this became, becomes opaque to the transmission of light. It's a really interesting phenomenon. I'll show you a movie of that in the lectures.